Hello friends, why do people love uh, lies for their own sake? We have seen because it gives pressure, some kind of pressure. And also, and also, we can say that uh, charitable lies, lies for the sake of fun and all those lies, points that they lies. No? The, those things won't harm us. But what, what is going to harm us is the lies that the light that sink up goes deep into the mind. It's a deliberately created light. So like that of Iago, as we said. So that is, uh, such lights are really harmful. Now he goes on to philosophical truths and theological truths. Silence told me, he says, but howsoever these things are thus. Uh, whatever you say about lies. Howsoever these things are thus, that means whatever you say about lies, uh, this is this pressure, it adds pressure, it is innocent, some, some lies are innocent, some lies are uh, uh, that is harmful and so on, in men's depraved judgments. So when you say that it is lies, how some use this pressure and so on, that is the judgment of my man which is the depraved and affect, affections, ruled by affections. Depraved means defective. Such judgments are defective. Affection means feelings. So you may say, based on your feelings and your defective judgments, that lie, lies are good, lie, the people lie, people, people love lies and all those things. Yet, yet, says, the highest good of man. A truth which only that, that means does. D O E S. So, old form we have seen. That is, that is, does. Which does. So, old form we have seen. Make it and other. Which only that judge itself. Understand? Truth only can say, can judge itself. That means truth is fact. Truth never changes. Truth never changes. It judges itself. If you say this is true, that is true. So, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. That is true. Nobody else can change it. So, judges itself. Teach it then. Enquiry of truth. Who teaches? Teacher this teaches. Truth teaches us. What? Enquiry of truth, which is the love making or wooing of it. Wooing. Wooing a lady. That means try to fall in love with a lady. So, truth tells us. What does truth say? That if you go after truth, Try to find out truth. Enquire. In enquire your truth. This is just like the love making of a love making of truth. Means falling in love with truth. So when you are enquiring about a lady or wooing a lady, what are you doing? You are going after it, after her. So that is your interest. You are, you are showing interest. So, truth teaches you that if you show interest, hmm, it is just like falling in love with it. Interest in truth. Follow truth, tell truth, act according to truth. That is just like making, means uh, falling in love with truth. The knowledge of truth which is the presence of it. So, if you know truth, no. You know that uh, you see. You, you know you. S there are two students quarrelled in the class. You know that. That means truth exists in you. Isn't it? Truth exists in you. You know that uh, uh, Macbeth. Macbeth committed murder. You know that. So that truth exists in me.
present, it is present in me, which is the presence of it. The belief of truth, it is the enjoying of it. You believe in truth, you move in truth, talk only truth things. <coughs> All your dealings are truthful. Then what will happen? <coughs> that is the enjoying of it. Always honesty is the best policy. Be always honest, then you can enjoy truth and your life. Otherwise what will happen? You will always have the feeling of hiding something from others. <coughs> Before the fall, <coughs> sorry, Adam and Eve, they enjoyed life in the paradise. But the moment they committed a lie, then what happened? That means hiding away from God. So they started, they were hiding it is. According to the anthropomorphic view of God, means once upon a time people believed that humans, God was like man, appeared like man, humans. So there is in the in the paradise when Adam and Eve when they were living together happily, a true life, God used to come down every evening for evening walk with them. For going evening walk with them. Morning walk, I don't know, but the evening walk, that's what people say. But the day they <coughs> committed a lie, that means Something which was not liked by God. <coughs> what happened? That day God came down and said, Adam, Adam was not found anywhere. He was hiding. Already that <coughs> his conscience was pricking. So if he commit any lie, commit means a, say a crime. Okay? A crime is a lie in action. <coughs> Send it. This day, a crime is a lie in action. It's a product of a lie. A crime is a product of a lie. Spreading bad news is a product of a lie. You can, you will never be happy. But on the other hand, if you believe in truth, so that what will happen? I live according to the principles of truth. Tell truth. Tell always the truth. Move in truth. You see, I have seen, you, you, you must have seen uh, some shopkeepers. They are perf they are very happy people. Go their books of accounts, perfect. Tax people will come and they will just sign and go. People believe in them, see, in, in such people. Whatever they give, even without weighing, you know, it is the correct way. They enjoy life. The other person, Suppose somebody is always hiding things, he is always a worried man. So be happy. You lead a life like daylight, open to others, frank. If you commit fraud, what happens? Yes, you are sad. But if you are frank and gentle and moving, telling the truth, then you enjoy it. The belief of truth, which is the enjoying of it, is the sovereign good of human nature. Sovereign means the greatest good of human nature. So the definition of what is the greatest good of human nature? <coughs> it is not amassing wealth. It is not making money by foul deeds and things. Ah, see, bribe for example. It's a product of life. <coughs> so after taking bribe, what are you shivering? Whether vigilance people will come or not. If you deny the bride, you can keep your head straight. You can talk to anybody, don't worry. See, you are not bothered. So that is the sovereign good of human nature. So what is the sovereign good of human nature? <coughs> Searching truth, inquiry of truth, knowledge of truth, and also belief in truth, then you enjoy your life. That is the point. Now theological truth. <coughs> this is about existentialism. Existence. <laughs> Sorry, not existentialism. Existential truth. You can call it existential truth. 
Now, sense standing is theological too. What is the attitude of God? How important is truth for God? The first creature of God. In the works of the days. Days means seven days. <coughs> seven days of creation. That is days mean. The first creature, the first product that God made was the light of the sense. Means when God looked around, he saw there is chaos, there's all disturbance, matter, there is no order. So first is, you can see 14, sentence 14 explains sentence 13. First he breathed light upon the face of the matter or chaos. The same thing in sentence 13. The first creature of God, the works of the days, was light of the sense. Light of the sense means light upon the face of the matter of chaos. Means putting everything in order. Before the creation of this world, matter was in disorder, in chaos, disturbed. So God first put things in order. That is, the first creature of God in the works of days was the light of the sense. That is, <coughs> same thing. First he breathed light upon the face of the matter of chaos. And then sentence 13 again says, and the last was light of reason, intellect. And sentence 14, and he breathed light upon the face of man. Same, parallel. 13 was the light of the sense. 14, that he breathed light upon the face of man. And then what happens? See? And then what happens? And his Sabbath ever since is the illumination of his spirit. His Sabbath means rest. After the creation, now he is taking rest. So, throughout the time when he is taking rest, God is taking rest. Theology, no? this is theological truth. So, God is taking rest. Then, throughout the period of his rest, what is he doing? And his Sabbath ever since, illumination of his spirit. And sentence 14 says, and he breathed and inspired light. What is breathing and inspiring light? Light means renewing this world. The, the world is being renewed every day. It is created. But now you have to renew it. See, that's what is that's what God is doing. So point of from the point of view of God, what has God done? He has put First, put chaotic matter in order. Then, he created man. The crown of creation. After creating him, put light upon on him. That means reason. He was given reason. Now what is he doing? Taking a rest. During his rest days, what is he doing? He is inspiring man. That's why you find or he breathes light in, in the, the face of man, or inspiring man, or renewing this world. That's where there is progress. Think of the Paleolithic man, Neolithic man, then one uh, nomads, after that we have uh, agriculture, then machines, industry, now we have got uh, chips and AI. What is AI? Computer and artificial intelligence. So you can see the <coughs> beautiful AI, I mean artificial intelligence, a robot, a woman robot, she is going to be sent to the outer space by our great country, India, in the near future. Now this development <coughs> is taking place because God is always illuminating us. So illuminating means truth. When you find and discover something, what is actually discovering? Finding a truth. <laughs> so truth, actions, acts of truth so are happening in this world because God enlightens man. So you can see sentence 12 is philosophical truth. 
what is what is truth enquiry of truth knowledge of truth and belief of sovereign good of human nature what about god god is every all the time he is inspiring him so that is that is prompting to discover things lot of things are hidden in this world so we have to discover it and you discover it what happens is that you are finding the truth so that is from the point of view of god so 12 13 and 14 so 13 and 14 again 13 14 is the explanation of 13 so there's nothing more to say about that so it's jo his chosen one chosen one some people say they are used now humans for the creatures in this world the crown of creation the quintessence of dust as shakespeare says is humans so the chosen ones are the humans that's why we are developing progress send it animals don't progress at least as we know see you can see have you seen an ox or a cow and they are living in a house in a making a house and living you know nothing of that it never happens but a chosen one man is not like that and then again he says what do people say a third aspect first is philosophical aspect then theological aspect then from the point of view of poets and a sect of philosophers called epicureans in epicureans means they abandon according to them enjoy your life because tomorrow never comes so you drink and be merry that is even such people among them they had a great poet his name was lucretius roman poet lucretius is a roman poet who believed in epicureanism who defended epicureanism epicureanism is a philosophy of eat drink and be merry because we do not know what is going to happen to us carpe diem as marvels to his coimistus carpe diem cast the day says carpe diem so that is cease the day take the day the carpe catch the mis the means today you have so enjoy that there is a sect of philosophers they were called epicureans 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 see omar khayams omar khayams views of life epicurean omar khayam you have heard of them heard of him omar khayam so that is epicureans even such people such a sect that is the poet that beautified the sect the poet is lucretius beautified means he, who spoke about and supported epicurean philosophy roman boy he wrote his only work known work is de rerum natura de rerum natura you can see the meaning natura and nature rerum you have got in english reify in english word reify reify means the concept of things reifying things thing that's the meaning reify so they means about about things of nature That's that's the translation about the things of nature. They are rare in nature. About the things of nature, or on nature of things, on the nature of things, or on the nature of the universe, you can translate it like that. On the nature of things, or on the nature of universe. It's a poem. It's an epic poem. In six books, written in six books. Listen. in hexameter hexameter means six feet lines monometer is i have given i am now these days i am also taking classes on english prosody and there i have explained these things uh, meter means 
a foot, a measure of a line in poetry. That means a meter normally this having two syllables. One is stressed or unstressed or both are stressed like that. A two syllable feet is a meter. Sometimes it can be three syllables, I don't know, they confuse you. Now, hexameter means a line having six meters. A, a, or it can simply be a, a line which can be cut into six pieces. That is, for the time being, that's enough. Otherwise, you will, I will unnecessarily confuse you with these things. Okay, so in here, that's a poem. The Rerum Natura is a poem, it's a Latin, written in Latin, in hexameters using hexameter and it was written by Lucretius. Lucretius was a, a, a poet and a philosopher whom, who beautified or who supported, beautified means who supported the sect. The sect means Epicureans, Epicurean philosophy, Epicurean philosophy. See? And what has he done? He supported them. Otherwise he says, that was otherwise inferior to the rest. That was the sect that was otherwise in, be inferior to the rest. The sect means the sect of Epicureans. The Epicurean philosophy, when he compare to other streams or of philosophy or other schools of philosophy, Epicurean philosophy is considered very of low standard. That's what, that's what he says. The poet that beautified the uh, sect, sect that was otherwise inferior to the rest. Otherwise inferior, uh, it is because the Roman poet Lucretius supported Epicureanism. Now we know about it, more about it. Otherwise, Epicureanism is below or inferior to a below standard philosophy or an inferior philosophy when you compare this to other schools of philosophy. And what does he say? He says excellently well. So Lucretius, the Roman poet who supported the Epicurean philosophy, which is supposed to be an inferior one, <coughs> if it had not been supported by Lucretius. Lucretius was a Roman poet. He wrote his only great work, epic, the Rerum Natura, that means on the, on the things of this world. On the things of this world, that is the translation. Or on nature of things, on nature of things, Natura, nature. Raven things, so on the nature of things, or on the nature of universe. Universe is a thing. Isn't it? Yes. So Epicurean philosophy as such is an inferior philosophy. But Lucretius beautified this. That's the meaning. Alright. What did he say? He says excellently well. He says about three things. Three uh, is pleasures. He gives three pleasures. What are they? Pleasure one is a pleasure to stand in the window of a castle and to see a battle and adventures there below. Your college multi-story building. See, on the day of athletic meet, what do you do? Most people stand in the third story or fourth story of the of the college and through the window they look down. Then what do they see? They see the fighting, running, racing and all those things. It's really a beautiful sight. When you look through the window, if you are there on the ground and you are standing very near, it's not, it's not as pleasing as when you look through the window. Like that he says. Person stand in the window of a castle. Castle castle of a king, because he had not been thinking about these castles. And to see battles and adventures there below. 
So you stand the window of a castle and look down. You find soldiers fighting, marching, they are uh, practicing. It's a very beautiful sight. It's a great pressure. Pressure one. And then is this, I am to see a battle and I'll be just there below. But no pressure. Right. It, is a, it is a pressure to stand upon the shore and to see ships tossed upon the sea. That is the other one. That is pressure one. Pressure one is to stand on the shore of a sea. That is a far away you can see ships tossing like up and down, dancing upon the waves. That is a great pressure. It is far away. Because you are not in it. There's no danger. It's a pressure to stand upon the shore and to see ships tossed upon the sea. It's a pressure to stand at the castle of a sea, castle of a, the window of a castle and see the battles and the dungeons that below. Gladiators fighting us. But the third pressure he says, but no pleasure is comparable to standing upon the vantage ground of truth. Vantage ground of truth. That means, that is poetic language. It says truth is like a mountain. Truth. And you stand top of it. So two things you saw. One is ships tossing upon the waves of seas, far away. Another, from a castle window, you look down and see gladiators, they are marching, they are practicing and all those things. And what is the third one? You stand upon the vantage ground of truth. That is literal meaning that a person who is very frank and who always tells the truth. A person whose character is so strong that he always tells the truth. He acts according to the principles of truth. Such a person, that's the meaning. You are standing on the vantage ground of truth means you are fully immersed in truth. Your actions, your feelings, your thinking, your, uh, your uh, uh, dealings, everything. 100% proof. 101% honest person. That is the meaning. Standing on the one day's ground of means 101%. There is no such person there. But standing on the truth. Then, he, when he stands in such a person, see the errors. See grown up people, when you look at small children playing and all those, you laugh. You know they are make, committing mistakes. Oh, whatever they do, according to you, they are mistakes. But you laugh. Why? Because he was at the superior position. You know, they, but they are ignorance. That's so you laugh. Ha ha ha. So, to see the errors and wanderings and miss and tempers. Errors, mistakes committed by this. See, when you watch new recruits, teachers, the seniors will sit back of the class and then they will watch the young teacher teaching. There are many mistakes, standing mistake, training mistake, writing on the board mistake, eye contact mistake, body language mistake. Because he is in a better position, he is on the vantage ground of truth, means knowledge. So he, but he won't find fault with you. Doesn't matter. Young man, apprentice, it's all right. Yes. So if you are such a person, you know, <coughs> knowledge, then always you laugh. As I told you about grown up people and children, their relationship. And wanderings and misunderstandings. Wanderings. You know, you are a very honest taxpayer. It's truth. One day is ground of truth. And you see many people, they are flying to 
they are trying they they are trying to hoodwink the government by by not paying the tax that's wandering listen even it is said in papers you have seen people somehow cheat the government even when we have got gist so that is wandering then what about that wandering and missed ignorance ignorance sometimes poor people come to I said, get out of this place, don't come me again, without my permission, don't come, etc. They shocked at them. That is ignorance. And what is the truth? The truth is, all what is given to you is gift of God. And you are supposed to share it with those who don't have. When you see somebody shouting at the beggar, then you laugh. Poor <laughs> people, he doesn't know. See? And then, so is it a teacher, a senior teacher, laughs when he sees the pitfalls and errors of a young apprentice or a newly recruited teacher taking class. And you find a rich man shouting at the poor man, you laugh. Because ignorance of that man. As uh, Dr. Johnson said, ignorance, madam, pure ignorance. But at the same time, you smile. Tempest quarrels. People quarrel. Sometimes in the papers you might have heard, for a jilebi, two friends quarrel and one stabbed the other. Stabbed the other. What a silly thing is that. But the emotions work out in such a way that finally end up in a marrow. So Tempest Macbeth. All those things he did we know. What is going to happen at the end, if you know the story? And you, just, uh, in fact, in a way you are, of course it is a dark enjoyment, but still you enjoy it. Isn't it? Yeah. So, when you find, if you are a fully honest person, and when you see dealings of people, dishonest dealings of people, you smile. Oh, they don't know, what, what are these people doing? They, are, they have no idea. Some someday this will be. Definitely he will be caught, and then he will have to pay the penalty for it. And then at the same day you enjoy the other ways. Understand? So one day the point of truth means a fully honest person, thoroughly honest person. When he sees the wanderings, the mists, and the fogs, and the errors of other people who move away from truth and dishonest dealings veil below, valley below. That is the metaphor continues. If you say vantage ground of truth is a hell, sorry, a hill, not a hell, hill, hill. <laughs> hill. Then when you look down these people doing this kind of things, errors and so on, that is in the valley. That way you should consider. So all those people who are committing errors, wanderings and so on, they are below because you are in a high level. You stand at a very high level. You are a thoroughly honest person. Understand? So vantage ground of truth means a thoroughly honest person when he sees people below in the valley means less people of lower standard, people who practice Dishonest dealings, you enjoy that. So there are three pressures, he says. Lucretia speaks about three pressures. One is standing at the standing on the seashore and watching watch watching ships toast in the sea. So it, it is a pressure to stand upon the shore and to see ships toast upon the sea. This. And then moving up and down. It is a pleasure to stand in the window of a castle and to see a battle, see the battle and the advantages there below. But no pleasure, psychological pleasure. And also you get when you when you are a thoroughly honest person, other persons are doing their wandering from truth, then whatever you feel again elevated. Oh, I am not. But at the same thing he says, you have to be humble. 
So always this prospect, this view, be with pity and not with the swelling and pride. When you look at the pitfalls and the errors and mistakes and dishonest dealings of other people, and you are a thoroughly dishonest man, don't look down upon them, but then don't, don't look at them with a swelling or pride. Don't think like this, oh, I am a great man. I will not do such a thing. I am thoroughly honest. Never be like that, because you are now standing, tomorrow you may also fall. Listen. So always this prospect be with the pity. You feel pity on them. Jesus said, them, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Mist, wanderings. When Socrates, Socrates was executed, Socrates probably had the same, uh, same attitude. People, they don't know what they are doing. So Akhandis knew the truth, but he was poisoned to death by the state. So, but he was not. So you see that. So things. Then what, what do you say? What do you, you should think? You should be. You should have the attitude of Jesus or Socrates. Feel pity on those people. Don't. Look at this prospect, this view of people engaging themselves in dishonest dealings, telling, telling lies, committing fraud, such things. Look at them with a pity. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Not with the pride and swelling. Don't say, hey, look at me, I am not like that. And finally, he concludes, the most important, you should all write down this sentence and paste it on the walls of your study room or your bedroom. What is that? Certainly it is heaven upon earth. You should understand that Bacon himself in his own life did not practice this. <laughs> what he is saying now in 716. Certainly it is heaven. He was caught for embezzlement of funds, misusing government fund, bribery. He had the habit of taking bribes for decisions made. He was a judicial officer also. Look at that. Ah, and such a person is writing this. He writes, suddenly it is heaven upon earth to be. That is, you know, Pope Alexander Pope, he summed up Bacon's character uh, as the wisest, the brightest, and the meanest of mankind. Corrupt, thoroughly corrupt. And such a person now is saying, suddenly it is heaven upon earth too. Have a man's mind move in charity, rest in providence, and turn upon the poles of truth. So what does that mean? These are the three most important virtues that we should practice. One is charity. I think all but Saint Paul had written in his epistles. Francis Bacon, he has summed up in this just one sentence. Listen, suddenly it is heaven upon earth. You can create heaven on earth if people do charitable deeds, if they trust in God and if they remain honest in their life. Bye. See you, see you again. For the time being, bye, have a nice day.